Hey everyone, Joan here. You know, lately I've been doing a lot of observing of people, how they interact, how they see themselves, how they see others, which brings me to what I want to talk about today is understanding the ego so that you can live a more balanced and peaceful life. So what is the ego? Hey, I'm sure a lot of you guys know already what it is. So the ego is your sense of self, the sense of who you are, your identity, the I am. The ego influences how you see yourself, how you see others, and the world around you. So the thing that we need to understand about the ego is how it works and the way it affects our daily lives. The ego is not who we really are. It is part of our human experience, but it's not who we are. You have to see the ego as something separate from yourself. This is me and this is my ego. Who I am inside, you know, separate from my physical body, my material world, physical world, me inside, my soul being, is not who my ego is. My ego is just a part of me as I go through this human experience. So how does it affect our daily lives? It is actually our egos that interacts with other egos. When we talk to someone, uh, we interact with them, have a conversation with them, relate to them. It's our ego that creates this perception of their ego. Sometimes our egos get in the way of how we really see a person for who they really are. Our ego comes up with an idea of who that person's ego is. The ego creates our narrative. It creates our expectations and it creates our suffering. Whether you realize it or not, we create our own suffering. It is our ego that holds on to emotions, experiences, what people see them as. It's the ego that creates the suffering by holding on to whatever it is it wants to hold on to. So let's dig a little bit deeper into that, how the ego survives. Our egos live in the past. They hold on to the past. They hold on to our past experiences, the hurt we've been through, the traumas, but also the successes, you know, the wins. The ego has a tendency to just hold on to its past because the ego will not survive without identifying with its past, its experiences and emotions. And I've said this in a past video before, we are constantly living in the state of our past because our ego holds on to our past. The ego holds on to how we were brought up, our culture, our background, our story, because who would you be without all of those things? Who would the ego be if it didn't have that identity? The thing about the ego is that it holds on to the extreme opposites. We always hear people talking about, oh, stop feeding his ego. You keep praising him. You keep telling him how good he is. You're feeding his ego. So those sound like a lot of like positive type of praise you put towards a person that feeds the ego. However, again, back to the extreme opposites, the ego can be fed with also the lower frequencies, like putting someone down, telling them they're not good enough. They're not smart enough. They're no good. Those also feed the ego. The ego survives feeling superior, but it also survives feeling inferior. The ego survives being the winner, also the loser, being the one that controls, the one that is a victim, the one that wins, the one that loses, the one with success, the one with failures. And so you could see those are polar opposites. The ego cannot survive with anything in between. The ego cannot survive in balance and in peace. So the ego has to hold on to those things. Cause again, who would you be without one or the other? So how do we tame the ego? The first thing is you have to have self-awareness, 
have self-awareness and when your ego starts to take over your mind and your thoughts influences your behaviors, when you're aware that your ego is kicking in that way, that is where you can start to find balance and more peace in your life and live more joyful and in harmony with the world around you. The ego loves to hold on to drama and traumas and their story, their past. Someone hurt me or someone did this to me. Your ego has to hold on to something like that because again, the ego would cease to exist if it didn't have any of that to hold on to. When you learn that self-awareness, then you can learn to tame your ego, keep it in check and make sure it doesn't influence you because when you start to look within, you want to pay attention to the thoughts, the conversations, the images that replay in your mind, which is all based on the past, and see how that affects the way you feel. And that's your ego that's being fed. Like the ego just loves to replay those conversations, those arguments, like that traumatizing moment but you can free yourself from the ego by not feeding that, by being aware of what's going on within you so that you can perceive your outer world in a different way. You can tame your ego by just changing your perspective. You know, always look within. You always have to check in what's going on within you because that affects the way the world around you is. A lot of times you have these ideas of a person or a situation or just the rest of the world and that might not even be true because your ego is getting in the way. Self-awareness, that is the most important thing. I feel like a lot of people don't have enough of that. I know it's very difficult to reflect and just think about what's happening within you and just really evaluating and really just being accountable for yourself and not blaming anybody else for the way you feel. Because at the end of the day, you have the choice on how you feel about yourself and others and the world around you. And it's your ego that feeds those emotions. So you got to learn how to be aware when those things happen because it's your ego. So why do we even have an ego? I mean, if we didn't even have our egos, we'd be all happy and just full of love and light and all that fluffy stuff. But the thing is, this is part of our human experience. This is part of living here on earth as a human, relating to people, relating to the world, learning how to be in harmony with nature. Our ego allows us to see all those extreme opposites because if you didn't experience one end of the spectrum, how can you really appreciate the other end? So the ego allows us to grow and learn and just evolve on the soul level you might be lucky enough to have moments where you can diminish your ego altogether. And if you do, you'll start to see all the possibilities, all the beauty and all the love that this world actually has to offer that your ego just gets in the way of. It gets in your way of love and understanding because our soul being is just that. It's just love and understanding and compassion and the ego is what's getting in the way of you being able to see that and really truly feel that. So again, the ego is just something that we have to live with, learn how to deal with, and the most important thing is to have that self-awareness of it so that you don't let your ego control your life, control your mind, take over who you are on the inside. And so the ego is just something that we live with. You know, we walk into our jobs, our social circles with this identity. You know, people see you a certain way and you see people a certain way. But just being aware of that, of your ego, you also become more understanding of other people's egos when you relate to them. You learn what level people operate because of how much they let their egos take over. So you have to see yourself as separate from your ego. Your ego is what's standing in the way of you and the rest of the world and the universe and this universal unity, oneness. Our soul being in its purest form, as separate from our physical body, our physical world, we are loving, ever expanding, ever growing, ever loving beings. And when you learn how to tame your ego or even diminish your ego, 
You start to see how beautiful the world really is. You start to see people for who they really are. The ego blinds you from seeing opportunities, all the possibilities of who you could truly be, being your highest self, being your best self, being the best version of yourself. Your ego gets in the way. So learn to tame your ego, become self-aware, become more aware when the ego starts to take over your mind and your thoughts. And when you're able to see your ego as who you're not, you start to see more balance in your life, more peace in your life. You see people differently. You see your world differently. And you find that you are more at peace for where you are right at this moment. So tame that ego. It'll change your life. I hope you enjoyed this video and got something out of it. I'm super fascinated by the mind and the ego, and I definitely will cover this topic more and on different levels. So in the meantime, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great day.